Today we will uh, continue with the introduction of natural resource basis. So when we talk about natural resource basis, we actually already discussed about that, the what are the different kind of natural resource basis that we need to deal in the course of natural resources management. Today we will uh, discuss little bit about the various factors that actually are responsible for influencing the resource availability, distribution and also uses. Now first one is human settlement and population distribution. What happens here? So people you know normally try to settle in those places where you will have plenty of resources available. There is no shortage, lot of water available, good quality water, good quality soil. So if you look back that you know in the history majority of the civilization has actually initiated in those areas which used to be you know uh, very rich and endowed with different kind of natural resources like water, soil, biodiversity so and so forth. So it depends uh, largely upon the geographic conditions of an area and the availability of various resources. So, whether you talk about uh, Southeast Asia, Europe, North America, you will find that the populations are much higher compared to the other parts of the world. So, you might be thinking why it is so. The prime reason is that availability of natural resources. So, human settlement and also the population will be much higher there. Second point, human migration. So, there will be natural tendency the large you know number of people will try to migrate to search for jobs to search for good soil good water availability of resources in much easier manner than where they are presently located so people will try to move from one place to the other where the opportunities for resource utilization resource availability is much higher so that means that even human migration if you see that it takes place for the quest of natural resources. The third economic activities once again so when you have resources available in certain area of course your livelihood on the basis of those resource availability will have much more opportunity for generating income to you know carry out sustainable livelihood. So people normally for economic region and activities they will try to go towards those areas which are having much higher and much easier access to different natural resources. For example like oil, coal, good soil, agricultural good areas, tourism, you have availability of timber, good road. So you see all those things actually encourage economic activities. And now when there will be economic activities much higher in one place in comparison to the other, so certainly people will move towards that area where the economic activities are much higher. Next trade, what happen is that when economic activities in place B suppose is higher than place A, then certainly the trades also will follow there. So people will try to move towards those areas where you have higher opportunity of trade which actually you know enables a country to acquire much more places for different places that required even the country have limited natural resources. Suppose say the case of Japan small country but yet they are one of the best developed countries in the world how they actually manage. So if one country does not have natural resources in plenty like the way we here in India we have. So what they do is that they do a trade. So they actually bring it from the other countries the resources that they need. So Japan is one of the richest country in Asia even if it has very very limited natural resources. So they do trade with the you know their required resources they get from another country and in instead of that probably they are sending some product some technology. So those kind of trading takes place. Next point conquest, conflict and war. If you look at in the history as well as a very recent past you will find that many 
wars, conflict among different countries are taking place just to have right on some natural resources. Right now, I recall one incident, probably some of you uh, might be knowing, the case of Dafur. You know, what happened is that there was a kind of a civil war erupted because of, you know, just to have good access to fertile soil, a good land. So on that basis, two countries, neighboring countries started, you know, killing each other. So what I'm trying to mean is that natural resources could be so important because it is the basis of our, you know, human civilization, survival or sustainable livelihood. So if one country is not having appropriate amount of natural resources, poor, and if a neighboring country has that, then there are two cases can happen. The country which is definitely, if they are rich in resources, they are expected to be also rich in, you know, trade, businesses, finance, economic wise. So they will try to control the territory, the territory where they have the resource utilization, suppose factory, different type of manufacturing unit. So what happened is that this create a kind of a disbalance in the area. So one country uh, progressing very faster, the other country, neighboring country is not able to do because suppose they are poor, so their territory is also somehow regulated by the neighboring rich country. What happened is that this country, even though they have their natural resources, but they are not in a position to utilize the resources for their well-being, for their prosperity. So what happened is that the neighboring country, which is much richer, stronger economically, they then, you know, try to somehow take control of that. And that starts some kind of conflict. And this is happening, you know, uh, since, you know, time immor immortal. So it happened, you know, hundreds, hundreds of years of back. It is also happening now. Probably it will happen in future as well. But the point is here to be noted is that, that everything is surrounding the natural resources so important is for our life. Now the next point is wealth and quality of life. Even wealth and quality of life is also associated with optimum amount of resources, natural resources available to mankind. Natural resources is a key component of all kind of goods and services, standard of living, you cannot think your life without the role, important role played by natural resources. So it gives an idea that how many resources the people in a place, you know, they are utilizing for their standard of living, livelihood generation. So this is what is actually creating wealth and also enhancing your quality of life is also decided by the quality and the quantity of the resources that is available in a particular area. Next, this particular figure diagram, it actually uh, tries to illustrate the interrelationship among different types of natural resources. So you can, you can imagine that the top resources, few resources if I take, so here water, soil and forest. Now see the interrelationships. Each one of them in one or other way is related in a, you know, in their dynamic fashion. If you look at the year, so year of course it is involved into an atmospheric circulation and it has a role also in regulating temperature in our environment. It also has a role to play in water air purification. So once it plays a role here in temperature, then this has also relation with evapotranspiration, which is having relation with soil. Now water also have you infiltration, rainfall, which is also regulated by temperature because it creates, you know, high humidity, low humidity. Again, rainfall has also relation with groundwater recharge. Rainfall also has a relation with flood. And then if you have come here, soil, forest, of course, soil and forest, they are interlinked. Soil, water is also interlinked and water, air is also interlinked. Now here evapotranspiration is taking place. It has a role, temperature, humidity, and then you come down to forest, 
forest also all lots of trees and plants of course their photosynthesis is taking place then you have habitat provision which is also again you know dependent on the availability of food and timber so food and timber also play a role in our you know daily life in our house building house building our recreation areas now these things are also related with provision habitat provision means where actually we reside so in a sense you see that that all these uh, major resources natural resources if we you know look at they are somehow related with each other so what does this mean this means that we cannot address any issue related to any one of the natural resources in a compartmental approach so the approach of natural resource management should be very integrated manner so if we suppose want to address the issue of water then also we need to think about soil if we want to address any issue associated with natural resources like forest we cannot ignore soil water air so this entire thing in natural resource management paradigm it is important for us to understand that compartmental approach will not work or provide the desired outcome that we expect from the natural resources that means making our life sustainable so we need to also take care of natural resources that are available around us in a very very integrated manner so as i is telling you that these interrelationship among different types of natural resources are actually key for our sustainable livelihood and also uh, so called survival for you know mankind so whether you talk about land or water resources as i said that they are interlinked through hydrological cycle they are linked to also the atmospheric cycle precipitation directly indirectly related with ground water water management system both surface and ground water resources are essential for plant and animal biota so that means forest and other plantations in agriculture area forest of course as i discussed in the previous uh, slide that it provides shelter habitat not only for our houses homes but also for recreation uh, stops which is also an important part of our life then of course soil which supports the you know growth and development of the forest resources plant provide us food but it cannot also provide anything without the help of good quality of water soil and air mm -hmm.